Good morning. Another four minutes for the afternoon. So thanks for the quiz. Uh, you further increased my heartbeat, okay? <laughs> my domain is not from semiconductor, but I'm venturing into the semiconductor industry very recently. I'm 30 plus years industry veteran, started with nuts and bolts in a heavy automobile industry called Ashok Leyland. I never seen uh, wires also, very little wires, okay? But we are going to talk about a uh, little bit, a lot of jargons being discussed. Uh, my presentation is only uh, my journey and how we are seeing these disruptions. We are very fortunate to be born on this century, especially people like me. I've seen all these disruptions. From the bicycle is a, one of the disruptive product. I got a chance to use the telephone, cell phone. Now, a vehicle which is equivalent to a cell phone. This is what I'm going to talk in the next 30 minutes or so. So my topic is, you know, like uh, revolutionizing mobility. It's my passion. I started very early, you know, like buying spare parts and assemble the two-wheeler and go for a famous scissors rally. The cost of the project is only 2,000. Price money is 10,000. <laughs> if you are lucky, we get the money back. Otherwise, it's gone. But we learn a lot of engineering. This is how I started my career. Due course, I also got inspired by the software. So I switched my line to learn a little bit about software. Those days, my first uh, software introduction is basic language. Because I love that computer room, no? when I walk through the lab, it's glass and air condition. When the door is open, no? I feel very nice. And we were all sweating in the workshop, no? like uh, turning the machines. Then. I further continued, engineers should learn about Fortran. It's a scientific language. Then the love continued. Then I went to study COBOL. And I wrote my scientific application in COBOL. It's very easy to code. Because it's like English. Like what our friend talked about math works, no? like you drag and drop libraries. You know, like you write an essay, a program is ready. But Fortran, you have to sit and debug a lot of times. So let me go into my presentation. My topic is navigating a lot of keywords here. Can you read it? We know like uh, navigating technology disruption, software, EV, chips, okay? Let me try to make this kitchen out of this. So, I used extensively Genai here because I don't get the right images. So now there are fantastic tools. I give the prompt, I get an image. So I, I gave some prompt, you know, like petroleum-based car, legacy, very odd shape, I got one. Very interesting. I've seen in my life some of these cars, you know, like it's called a Morris Minor, all those cars, black color, very nice chrome plated, thanks to the technology. It helps me. Only thing is it's not symmetrical, you know, like maybe I need to say what not it should provide. Again, not very long ago, this is what I was telling, I, Worked on Greece, you know, like IC engine, diesel engine, okay? There is no ECU, you know, like Bosch, the Myco, you know, like a fuel system. All mechanical parts. First time I was so proud that I put two wires to remove one of the long harness, which is the cable, to actuate your auxiliary gearbox. Today we are talking wireless. Of course, you know, like uh, very little electricity we learned those days. Then we all become very civilized. Lot of learning, lot of awareness. So we understand, you know, like we educate ourselves. Okay, we have to do, we have to do something to the society, sustainability. I think my previous speakers have set the stage very well. Lata has done a good job of uh, uh, sustainability. Then we all talk about standards, you know, like uh, the first speaker gave a A spice. So I come from an ISO background, then I spent around 17 years in aerospace, AS standards. What is passionate to me is systems. So my basic education is only diploma in mechanical engineering. Then I got a passion to study as well. I went to do my BS, not in the campus, distance learning. From Hosur, I come to write an exam every, every time, you know, every six months come to Bangalore. Then I was further fascinated 
Then I continued my MS. I didn't get time to pursue my PhD. Now I'm doing it after my so-called retirement. The topic is artificial intelligence. And, K, and specialization is cognitive AI. How humans think. So today somebody asked about V, ECU and all, no? Like, it's very important. When you drive a car, your ECU is fantastic, you know? You can sing a song, you can smoke, you can drink, you can talk, you can drive in single hand. It's very, very important how to abstract your neurons. You use only 2% or less than 2% when you are doing a sports driving. In a normal driving, it's much less. So how to abstract this? That is another passion which I'm doing. Technology innovation is the keyword I want to touch upon here. Now, it is my imagination, you know, like, this is going to be very future. This is again thanks to Leonardo.ai. <laughs> so, what I'll see, as an engineering community, what problems you are trying to solve? We talk about EV, and uh, Lata also mentioned they are slowing down. What is the reason? There is an imbalance. It's very easy to bring out an electric vehicle. Where are the chargers? How to plan my route? Is my car is so, you know, like communicative? Do I have a 5G? Can I charge when I'm having a coffee? When I have an excess power, how to give it back to the grid? When everybody charges same time, the grid blows. <laughs> so these are all the problems still outside. I want to touch upon through my new venture, how we can focus a little bit outside of the car. Okay? So we are working on a high power or fast, intelligent, smart charging infrastructure. That's our uh, project. But this is an another view. A car and, you know, like less mechanical components. Okay, this is the result I got. <laughs> I could see a display. I saw some harness, some battery pack, few things. But this is not perfect, but I'm going to perfect it after next presentation. <laughs> so, I have seen this through my learning. This is very important. I think somebody has also presented the evolution of automotive electronics. I think today's AI is nothing but the reinforcement learning of all these years. So if you take all this architecture and give it to a nice AI tool, it will give you a very, very good uh, architecture, refined one. But we don't do it because we are trying to do from the last decade as an input. So this is only for your reading. You know, like what we are here today is, we are talking about autonomous driving and electric vehicle, so much of complexity. Rise of electric vehicles, it is progressive because still we have not, you know, like I always look at this slide, all are coexisting. This is not going to go away for the next 50 years. Okay, I, I have a pleasure of, you know, like I was a little so worried when I bought my recent car. So everyone was saying EV is going to take the world. I love the diesel vehicle. So I went and bought this XUV 700. I enjoy driving. But the second thing is, we are not really making the overall cost economics also. End of the day, you have to pay for the development or for the use. So we, we talk about rise of electric vehicles. There are some definite advantages, but it's going to pay back once the numbers are achieved in the coming years. So autonomous driving is another interesting thing. Thanks to Mahindra, I think I enjoy. What is important there is autonomous driving. It's not only pleasure, it's not a technology supremacy or something, efficiency. See, I'm, I'm a, a passionate rally driver in the two wheelers those days, but I love driving, long drives. But the fatigue, what I used to drive earlier to now, we can feel. Especially when you are getting old, get into an autonomous vehicle. So you definitely you will enjoy the drive. Of course, there is a transition path. Now let us get into my limited knowledge, a mechanical engineer talking about embedded systems on chip. Okay, bear with me if I do some blunders here. So for me, everything is a system. Okay, so if you, if you drill down a vehicle, the future vehicle, all these topics are very important, which constitutes a vehicle. So there are two ways, you know, like I understand software, there is a layer of software, 
And there is an emerging technology, emerging future technology, software defined, chip defined vehicle is going to come very soon. That means over a coffee, which I put in my first slide, you can change the chip and uh, change your complete route planning also. You can change the vehicle performance and load another set of software over, over the air to make completely in between the trip also. There are some microchips developments are happening, but we have to wait for that. So let me go into importance of chip design. I'm very new to this industry, hardly two months now. Whatever I learned, I'm just trying to present here. What is an electronic chip and that evolution? In the VLSI industry, this chart is a kind of a Bible. So the chip performance and the variance are growing or doubling every year. So silently things are happening because it takes a lot of time to come up with one chip, but they are going to make in more than cars. And especially this industry, I got very zapped. EDA industry is much more, much larger than all the mechanical embedded software put together. And these companies are buying the rest of, the latest thing is there's a company by name Synopsys, they acquired ANSYS. We used to consider ANSYS is a, a big company. So today they acquired because they understand that there is going to be a cross leverage. So this is on one slide which you need to keep it in mind. The takeaway here is things are growing. The trend is it's going to grow more. Why? Chips are everywhere. Okay. And every household, you will see some chips, at least 10 in the coffee maker because they want quality, consistency, and sophistication. And I'm a coffee lover, you know, like you have a simple coffee machine which got two chips. One is for heater, one is for power control, switch on, switch off. That much I know. <laughs> but look at the, the product on the right, the right side of yours. And very mature. Even our automobiles are not to that level. You know, you name every technology, everything is there. But of course, which is less than 200 semiconductors. And they're talking about much more. And people are developing, like cars, charging units are being developed. Today, I heard about earlier, we used to have, you know, like uh, two amps, five amps. Now, people are talking in three digits. <laughs> because power requirements, fast charging, everything is required in this product also. There is a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, things we can imbibe from this. Now this is another interesting slide. I like this because earlier I didn't know what is this, but when, once I get into this industry, there are so many chips which is connecting to so many MCUs. I think the previous speakers also told about the challenge what we face. This is in the islands of excellence. Very soon, I think these all will get cons consolidated into a one or two boards which is going to happen very soon. So now let us talk about the disruption, uh, you know, time timelines. In the vehicle architecture, this is not, this is my own view, but there are a uh, lot of other versions or presentations already available. But what I understood is from my days, we were only thinking about a mobility means like a mechanical system. Okay, you put fuel, crank it, and you put a lot of lubrication, and the, even the dashboard is a mechanical one. Okay, there is no, you know, like only thing is you use dynamo to light your headlamps, then a little bit on your radio if it is available. Then we moved into the uh, transition into controller based systems. I have another slide which talks about the timelines also, which we discussed that. Then today we are talking about software defined vehicle. I think it was well explained by the previous speakers. What I am envisaging in future, it could be function defined, drag and drop, okay, then custom chip and software defined vehicles. So all are going to uh, come into existence. Like for example, it's like I take my video player or a digital player, I load one program, start listening. Okay, so the chip industry is also thinking about this. They are, you know, like getting into micro level in large numbers. I have an interesting experience. 
when I was working in Ashok Leyland, we, we, we married a product which is from Germany. We don't know how to control the features because if it is mechanical, I can change the gears, right? Here you can't do anything. There is a small EEPROM. Every day we send the results back to Germany through fax. They will send another chip, 72 hours later it will reach us. <laughs> so it is so constrained, right? We can't do anything, you know, like I have to send the complete test results and he will program and he will make another EEPROM. So today, you know, like uh, I have a knob here, I want uh, sports mode, you know, like economy mode, normal mode. It's all done with a combination of software and hardware. So it could happen at the full vehicle level. For example, I'm going for a long trip, especially the truck companies. When you are in snow, you might go intercontinental, okay? You have a plain road, you have a hill road. You should be able to change the complete behavior of the vehicle in the trip itself. So this is something which is coming up. What I am seeing is like uh, making a car, it's very easy for the mobile and software companies. Because we see that, you know, like uh, after you remove the, the, the IC part, there's nothing, anybody can do it. So I am seeing like these are all tested, proven, okay, then this is equally uh, reliable. You need to scale, you need to convert into power requirements. So there is a lot of crossbreeding already happening here. For example, today through, because of the two different environment, you create a middleware called CarPlay or Android car, right? Very soon, you know, like the same architecture, same chips can go into the vehicle also. This is one direction. And of course, this combination is going to open up billions of opportunities. This is what I'm looking at. Being a software person and also an engineer, I'm visualizing, for example, many people talked about that mobility as a service, okay? So today, young generation, they don't want to own a car. They just want to point A to point B, that's it. And they also have a lot of options. By the way, uh, uh, what uh, Lata was saying this morning, there is an app made in India. Like I want to go from point A to point B. You load some cash. It will give you the cheapest, shortest options. Tickets booked. You go and sit there. It's called Tumak. T-U-M-M-O-C. Very interesting. So mobility and multimodal mobility. Again, you have a choice. You can choose your configuration. Car as a service. Nobody, uh, you know, like owning is going to fade away very soon. Some people like, you know, like I want some personalized for some years, some months. Of course, this you can connect, multiply this matrix, anything to as a service. Of course, this is going to make a big impact on the uh, supply system or an ecosystem, which uh, uh, Lata very nicely explained. Because of this complexity, there's going to be a competition, there's going to be a big war. End of the day, everything comes to the software and chip. That's the reason uh, even India has taken some grand initiative to get into this. I, I think few countries have already mastered and they are monopoly. But very soon in India also, we will have this kind of a thing. Like the revolution, what has happened in software, we believe that will happen in VLSI as well. And with the help of experts and software technology, this will much, it will go much faster. This is what I believe. So the focus area is here is like we talked about individually, you know, like a little bit of a design space, but we need to have a very holistic view, the future vehicle, not only EV, because the hybrid will stay for a longer time, which will have a grand success. The reason I'll tell you, because what I have seen in this 30 plus years, few countries, their economies heavily depend on the vehicle ecosystem. For example, Germany, tops in the electric and autonomous, but still they make the IC vehicles for the world. What happens if they shut down? So there will be a imbalance, suddenly things will collapse. So they are preparing for the future, they are refining the present. Okay, so you need to really understand today, all these topics what I'm mentioning here, it is already available in the conventional vehicle also. It is adding some value, it is getting version after version, maybe a number of uh, CUs are consolidated into one. Then the enabling technologies, for example, 
there are some kind of a co coming communication without wires. I learned this in, the, in my aerospace stint. So we used to have several thousands of kilometers in A380 of cables. It constitutes around 7% of the total weight of the aircraft, only the wiring. And we changed from signal, signal cables has been removed and we put a, a fiber which can take 100 cable signals into one, those kind of a thing. And you have infotainment, the growing needs are very high, especially the young generation. So we need to look at it in a very holistic way. So this is, these six blocks are going to, you know, like uh, have some kind of a verticals for the cars of today and future for several years. So I need not to go into each one of the things. Of course, what, what I'm looking at is advanced processors. Like there are many companies, you would have seen that they have, the stock prices are suddenly going up. You know, like NVIDIA is one such company. There are many companies are in the making, but once they, see, chip making is also like a, a pharmaceutical projects, right? It takes a little longer time. I'm still learning, but what I understand is the design space itself, it takes around six to eight years. Then afterwards making is like it's in a, in a factory setup. So roughly to come to the market in the conventional time, it's around seven to 10 years, depending upon this. So now this growth is not only in only the power electronics or power control, signal, communication, 5G, especially the power chips, including charging and battery management system on board and outside. A lot of things are happening here. AI, I think there's a lot of discussions happened in AI. Uh, what I understand here is like, AI is nothing but a, a consolidation of last 20, 20, 30 years experience. It's a very good guide, okay? Today, somebody has really done the libraries for us to use. So I did a first project on machine learning and AI some seven years before. It's a social uh, project. We wanted to spot the stranded ambulances in the city. So there was a French uh, intern was coming here. It was like a, we were doing some drone project. So he came and sent, spent some time with me. So he need to write every frame of aerial images, you know, like image classifications. Today, you go and do something in the Python, everything is built already. And we saw that the tools like uh, MathWorks, you got a very nice editor. So cleaning, processing itself, we took for almost months. Today, it's a click of a button. So with the technology is also improving these areas. So there is a need for chips also to compensate that. Power management is another thing. There is a, I see a big imbalance in the EV segment globally. So of course, few countries have managed. US is one country, you know, like, but the problem is it's going to saturate at some point of time. Look at the country like India. I understood from my industry friends, why you are not going for a fast charging so that you can reduce the time? They say two problems. One is the cost of ownership. Even for a, a heavy vehicle, they restrict up to 300 kilowatt. It's not that there is no space there. One is the cost. Second thing is they don't have the raw material or the battery packs available in large numbers. So even if we put a high power charger, there's no market. And second thing is high power charger is a, a big animal by itself. It's not modular. So that's one area we are trying to address from Salton through our counterparts in US, how to bring a modular. You just buy to your need. If you are having a two wheeler, buy one block. If you have a car, buy four blocks. If you have some kind of a time constraint, you are a logistics company, six or 10, okay? If you have a bus, go for 20. So this is something which is done. And second thing is, it's, it's still a dumb machine. So battery management is there, but it does not have the capability to have a bi-directional communication. Also, it is a unidirectional. It just takes the power. It cannot understand the global requirement in the grid. So this is something which is also going to come very soon. Of course, this is what I was saying. You know, like 450 kilowatt is still you know, like many countries and uh, many of the OEMs prescribe this and support this, but very few numbers. Because there is no matching vehicle requirement to this. 
ideally you know like in case of it's a, it's a coffee time in three minutes to five minutes you go for 60 to 100 kilometers the technology is available but the challenge is the market education need is a question and the price and cost of course there are a lot of other things the charging system itself requires a lot of electronics and chips and services to make this acceptable by for example in in mobile phone when they started you know there's a lot of struggle from a conventional mobile phone to touch phone but today there is a standard right and its application look at uh, we talk about uh, tesla a lot you know like i had a very uh, wild comparison tesla is n uh, nothing like a, an iphone or an android phone the vehicle comes with a basic price then afterwards everything is subscription including your autonomous driving if you want you pay you get that option enabled same car got it so likewise there could be a lot of opportunity in the vehicle and outside of the vehicle as well like a payment gateway interoperability okay so for example you are going to the office you have a solar take it carry the power give it to the grid in the office just one hour before you charge and come back so today th th these are all the areas the technology can definitely help us and there are so many other technological things you know we are not looking at there is a big challenge in the developed countries where the large number of evs are there there is a big load on the grid there's a lot of they're not able to balance it okay then they use ai to do some kind of a data analytics to monitor that then how to load balance etc and many times the there is i'm not an expert in the electrical system but there is some kind of a pseudo uh, power travels from the grid to the charger it doesn't account it so there is a loss there is all there also okay so this is one area there is a lot of uh, opportunity of course the rest of the things are everyone know like uh, sensors perception systems everywhere there is a piece of electronics there is a piece of chip there is an opportunity for a microchip today everything is embedded into the camera itself earlier you have a camera then you have a board and you have a chip now everything is packaged you can use it for the vehicle what i want to say is the last few slides vehicle to everything will open up opportunities for the non automobile engineers also your business to commerce business to business and now as a car manufacturer you have to take their considerations also into this of course there's a lot of uh, discussions from uh, mathworks and others also talked about the software system i don't want to go into details but this is one of the important things we need to take it cohesively when when the vehicle developments are happening cyber security is another interesting thing for the chip today all these chips are controlled or having an another layer as a security chip the today's uh, thing is i think they are going to use extensively ai there is going to be a security layer taped out on the chip itself so in future every chip will come with a security layer which is a common protocol so that you can use it so you can reduce that in your coding or an additional chip or device for the security purpose that's the message here we talked about scalability sustainability i think it's all ready now uh, we are in india we develop the technology for the world so what are we doing for the country you know this i want to take it as a personal thing i'm working on this project as a part of my uh, phd okay this is not for the cars for the truck industry uh, i drive a lot and i see a lot of accidents okay then i also understand what are the causes how we can use technology to bring something you know like some discipline or some control on this many of you if you are driving on a highway you would have seen that there is no lane di discipline and we have a lot of technology lot of codes available lot of software lane departure lane warning what are we doing with that it is going to the car they are very i believe that they are disciplined they drive and there is a warning but what happened to the uh, users who are large in numbers worldwide 
But there is a discipline. In some cases, you have to enforce the discipline. So I came up with some kind of an idea here. Accident costs lives. Okay? Sometimes, even the insurance will not cover. Okay? And not only to the vehicle, to the surroundings. Very tough to go and uh, claim that you know, this mistake is coming from so and so person. So, the yeah, idea came, you know, like how we can use, I am available to discuss this, if some interested uh, people, we can, they can approach me offline. So, what you see here is vehicle to everything, you have a 360 degree view, you can avoid some pedestrians or some side passengers can be, we have a cloud, we have a GPS, we can track when somebody is not using the low speed line, you would have seen in India, you know, like in the high speed line, all the trucks will be going very slow. And next to that, and the car and two wheeler fellow will be gone, he will be in the gutter. Correct? And they, they get into accident, and these truck drivers, they don't have a system of using the rear view mirror. So how to do that? So the idea came from my aerospace experience, put a black box. You call it as a controller or a VCU or ECU, whatever it is. Make it more economical. Give that as a free tool, like a registration fee. Subscribe. Safety as a service. And take the full control to the government so that you give some kind of a rating to the drivers on every trip. How many times you moved from your GPS points? Because all the roads are, you can measure you know, up to one feet if I'm right. But uh, good, good uh, GPS chips can even go for half a feet. Second thing is, in case of an emergency, you need not wait for somebody on goer to look at that. If there is an impact of so many Gs, straight away all the hospitals are alerted. You know that the, something has gone. So somebody can call this driver and say what, what has happened. They can come to the spot. And good and important thing is, you would have seen the growth of our road networks is quite high. So this is another thing, while learning our technology, Please put to your mind, this is one request, you know. You can take it to your companies. There is no IP here. If you want to develop a product, please develop it. Okay? Thank you very much. I think, uh, I don't know whether how much useful when I walk through this uh, disruption. This is what I want to present and share with you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, Rakesh here from Harman. So uh, first of all, coming to the last slide, we are building uh, long range V2X solutions and situational awareness on the cloud. So that's one of our domain oh, areas great. that uh, Harman is working on, by the way. Uh, but uh, regarding what you showed about, uh, you know, chips also, you know, the hardware also being something like a modular design where it can, you can swap it, swap out. Uh, that sort of a system, I think, uh, was proposed even when cell phones, you know, were evolving into smartphones. People are proposing that, hey, we can always swap in and swap out features as required. But it has not materialized. And part of that has also been because SOCs are very, very tightly, you know, uh, coupled to the features that they are currently being used for. And the cost aspect of this, right, and India being a very cost sensitive market, the problem here is each and every transistor in your system today is being squeezed to the maximum performance that it's possible with. So do you think considering that this, you know, has not even happened in the smartphone industry, do you, how possible it is on the automotive side? But, Just but curious on that. No, it's a, it's a very valid point. If you look at the smart, uh, smartphone industry, what they're trying to do is whatever they were doing as a software application after some maturity, if not 100%, 50% goes into SOC. That means they standardize it. Then they put some kind of a layer on top of it, which is only going to be in the software layer. If you look at iPhone, all of them are not their chips. You know, their competitors chip also there. And every, every year, 10% of the new chips are coming in. Why these chips are coming? Because it's cost effective with the more differentiation and functionality. So this is possible only in a large market, okay? But what I'm saying is it's a future. If all these companies, automotive companies today, they rely on standard chips and they build the whole system around that as a software. 
But in future, once there is a demand and automotive companies should clean up their uh, architecture and network and they come up with, you know, these are all the chips, rest of the things I'll manage with the software, then it's going to be very easy. Of course, it is not there, it is challenging, but definitely we are going into this direction. Thank you.